Interdimensional beings, spirit guides, and extraterrestrials explained in today's episode of The Magister's Sanctum. Greetings, everyone. I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode where we are going to dive into more depth on interdimensional beings and the planes of existence. Now, I got a huge response from last week's video, and I saw from the comments that there was a lot of unanswered questions, so I hope to go more in depth on that and to explain it a little bit more fully. So, First thing I gotta say is a lot of these videos that I designed are aimed for about 10 to 15 minutes. So you're not gonna get everything from one video. And if you are going to, you know, go down the 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 spiritual YouTube route, you should also use these videos in conjunction with your own readings or your own intuitive knowledge as well. And so, so make sure to do a little bit of both and, you know, just as a Buddha said, you know, don't, don't take my word for it too. Do your own studying and do your own searching as well. Um, there, there's a lot of knowledge out there. There's, there's a lot to read about. You know, if, if we look at here, here's uh, Manly P. Hall's The Secret Teachings of All Ages. I mean, look at how thick that book is. And over here is the Encyclopedia of Spirits. And again, there's thousands of spirits in this. It's a lot of information. So we're not gonna be able to cover everything in one video. I've, I've taught music for, you know, 25 years. And just as in making these videos, you're not going to fit all that knowledge in a 30 minute or a 60 minute guitar lesson or bass lesson or any of that. So think of it as a weekly process. If I say something that that's not understood or that you disagree with, um, feel free to ask, feel free to comment on it because chances are maybe I didn't explain it fully in the video. Chances are maybe, you know, it's going to come out in a later video. So again, you know, we're, we're all here to learn and, and I appreciate when people disagree with me because it allows me a chance to grow and learn as, and learn as well. Um, as I've said before in, in a previous video, we belong to the body of God. And when you come to me from a different perspective, well, I view it as essentially a version of God coming to me from a different perspective. We all have our perspectives and viewpoints, and we're all completely valid in how we think and in how we feel. So, ask away, comment away, say what you gotta say. This is, I, I, I look forward to hearing it all. Okay, so one thing that, that I found in, in last week's video is it, like I said, it got a huge response and some people said, well, you know, we can't, we can't be possessed because we are God. Other people said that, you know, d during my awakening, I found that demons did possess my chakras and, and other people also said, well, you know, I work with the Goetia, which from certain perspectives people would call them demons, but you know, they said I work with the Goetia and they are actually powerful and loving beings that want to, to raise the vibration of humanity. And everyone is right. Like that's that's really the bottom line. Everyone is right. Like I said, we, we all belong to the body of God. We all have different perspectives. It's, it's no different than, you know, being on the human level where, you know, we, we see a world leader and that world leader from one country's perspective seems evil, but within that country, that world leader is doing a lot of wonderful things for, for their people. And so I find that even on the cosmic level and the interdimensional and the spiritual level, it, it's very much the same. As the saying goes, as above, so below. And so everyone is right. Everyone has a valid approach and 
And today we're going to talk about the planes of existence and to dive further into how everyone is valid. Okay, so let's get into the different planes of existence and how we work with guides from those planes of existence. Let's start off with the third plane of existence, which is the plane of the animals. The third plane of existence is basically the 3D. It's, it's the dimension that we live in. It's the dimension of our physical bodies, um, the dimension of all the other animals. It is, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory because we are all beings in the 3D. When we go and work with beings from the third plane of existence, it's pretty much just working with other people. Those are our guides on the third plane of existence. It's when we ask our family for advice. It's when we ask our friends for advice. It's when we talk to other YouTubers and, and leave comments and, and, ask, and ask them for advice as well. It's also when we work with extraterrestrials. Now, a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, like, you know, the Arcturians and the Pleiadians, they're, they're highly advanced and, and are, aren't, they, aren't they higher dimensional guides? Well, yes, in the fact that they have the ability to, to access the higher dimensions more readily and more freely than we as humans do. Yes, that, that's very true, but they are still beings in physical form. So by definition, they are still third dimensional guides. And I think it's interesting because I was watching a video with Sadhguru once and people were asking him if, if he talked to aliens. And I shouldn't be surprised, but I was also surprised to hear him say, well, yeah, he, 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 has, he has seen aliens, he has felt their presence, he has, he, he has recognized them, but in his but from his perspective, it doesn't matter because he, he fundamentally knew that they are also third dimensional beings. They're here because, as he said, they're fascinated by us just as we are fascinated by them. And so, again, when we talk with other people or, or even extraterrestrials with beings from another planet, we are communicating with third dimensional beings. As we, as we transcend to the fourth plane of existence, we find that we go into the spirit realm. And what's interesting about that is when we transcend, and a lot of people who have had near-death experiences have talked about this, when we transcend, we have the ability to hear and feel other entities thoughts other people's thoughts and emotions there there are no secrets we 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 experience them just as we are experiencing us and every person who's gone to the spirit realm has said this also every person who has the ability to either meditate themselves into the spirit world or ha have explored the astral planes and the etheric planes and all this a lot of those people say the same thing too and it's interesting because as we transcend we are essentially losing our individual consciousness that's why when we're in the 3d we pretty much live within our minds but in the fourth dimension or the spirit realm, we begin to lose those boundaries and we begin to, to be able to sense the outside world as well as the internal world because it all starts to become as one. When we transcend to the fourth dimension to communicate with these spirits, that's when, that's when we are talking to non-corporeal forms. That's when we are talking to beings that have shed their physical casings. They are completely spirit and they are either completely in the etheric realms or the astral realms um, and they, they can travel time and space a bit more freely 
and they are not bound by the laws of physics as as we are. So that is that that is what communing with the fourth dimension is. And when we start to communicate with beings from the fifth dimension, that is the realm of the archetype. That is the realm of ultimate duality. It's the realm of the light and the shadow, uh, sacred masculine, sacred feminine. It's the realm that we can say is the home of the angels and demons, or you know, the Hindu gods or the Greek gods, um, h- however you want to put it. And so, what I think is interesting is, as I was talking about um, in last week's video, uh, as I was mentioning um, Lucifer, Lucifer is is an archetype. It's it's a mode of the universe, which is which is consistent throughout the universe. So, from a human's perspective, Lucifer would look like a human. From, let's say, an Arcturian or Pleiadian's perspective, Lucifer would look like them. But it's the same archetype that runs through the different planets. It's the same archetype that runs through consciousness in the same way. So these are all symbols and references to our individual personalities, our individual ways that we approach things. And that's why I said also in the video of We Belong to the Body of God, if we could get over our own anthropocentric viewpoints, we would find that there would be Jesus figures on other planets too. There would be Buddha figures on other planets. So the real question is when it comes to, let's say, demonic possession, since it is this fifth planar archetypical energy, is it really just us tapping in to that plane of either the shadow or the light, or is it an actual singular consciousness which is, let's say, infiltrating our minds? And in all honesty, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I'm not afraid to admit when I don't know something. I don't know if any human can know. Um, it could just be, like I said, you know, these are just universal energies. And when we happen to feel a certain way and we go down that path, then that universal energy, which is common to not just humans, but also to aliens, that universal energy just floods, you know, it, it just floods our chakras, it, it floods our beings. Um, and again, you know, it all depends on our perspective and how we look at things. Um, likewise, you know, when we, let's say, pray to Jesus, is there an actual singular consciousness of Jesus, or is it just the universal archetype of Christ consciousness? Um, these are these are questions that I don't know if we as humans or as third planar beings will ever understand but we do have tools to know when we are ourselves and when we are acting in accordance with our highest and best and we have tools to know when our own soul and our own light is dimming within within us so question to ponder see that's that's the realm of the archetype that is that is sort of the universal truth that we can comprehend as individuals before we graduate to the sixth plane of existence, which is, you know, let's say the laws of physics or mathematics or music theory. By the time you get to that, it's so abstract that there's not an individual consciousness anymore that we can relate to. It's completely abstract. And of course, the seventh plane, would be the plane of ultimate love, it would be the plane of God. And of course that is every being, every law, every good, every bad, every light, every dark, all at once, existing all at at the same time and all times throughout. So that is um that that starts to become a little bit harder for, for humans to comprehend, but 
that's why we start to break things down and we start to go into the lower planes. That's why, you know, I, even though I think it's important to always connect to source energy before asking for advice, before, for, you know, for, for any plane, um, and, and again, many spiritual practitioners would say this too, you know, but before you access, but before you talk to the angels, before you talk to the Goetia, go to God first to protect yourself so that you don't get wrapped up into the, you know, the, the, the spiritual politics of what these archetypes represent. Before you journey into the astral realm, you know, the, the fourth plane of existence, you have to go to God first to protect yourself, protect your silver cord, protect um, protect your individuality so that you do not become so wrapped up in, in, in the astral plane. And again, even go to God first before connecting with the third planar beings, before asking advice from other people or, or the other people in our lives as well. Always view it from a higher perspective as we go to seek other perspective. Um, it, it's the same thing, like in my personal practice, I like to use a lot of astrology and tarot because again, like I said, when, by the time you get to the seventh plane, it's something beyond words and it's something that, that, that is just out of our comprehension. We can kind of catch glimpses of it, but it is still, it's still very far out there. And so I, I use things like astrology and tarot to kind of bring it back to more of a human level. So astrology I view is like a, a sixth planar energy and tarot I view as a fifth planar energy. And again, when you start to draw from the lower planes, you, you begin to, to find that, that these energies can also be subject to manipulation. They can also be subject to other influences as well. So always, you know, connect with the most high first before attempting to engage with pretty much any other being, with, with any other external influence. So it helps to keep you to have your perspective. It helps to keep you um, aware of your sovereignty, of your individuality. And it also serves as a reminder that even though you are a spiritual being, having a third dimensional experience, you also are connected to something greater. So it works It works as a two-way street to remind us both ways of our individuality and of our connection. And I think when we find the balance between our individuality and our connection, that is really when we can access the universe in, in, in all of its abundance because we know we, we properly know our place in the universe. Um, one is not elevated above another. Okay, so I think I'll wrap it up there. Um, again, thanks, thanks for joining me on, on today's video. And thank you for all of your comments on last week's video. It, it got a huge response. And I, I look forward to seeing all of you on the next video. Um, thanks again. Much love and blessings to all of you. I love you all. And we shall now close with the chant of Obleron. Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron, Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. 
There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.